Hello, and welcome to Soothing Pods Sleep Stories. My name is Chris, and tonight I will be your guide as we dive beneath the dark, mysterious, and beautiful waves of the Mediterranean Sea. In this scary sleep story, you will learn all about the myths of ancient Greece that informed the people's decisions and helped them explain the strange world around them. If you enjoy listening to scary sleep stories, this story will help lull you towards a night of peaceful, restful sleep. If you don't find stories of monsters and sea creatures soothing, please choose a different story from a variety of genres and topics on the Soothing Pod channel. Before we begin, however, let us take a moment to relax and find comfort in the place that we are in, here and now. Close your eyes and allow your body to sink into the mattress beneath you. Right now, there are no expectations. There is no to-do list. By simply listening to the sound of my voice, you are already giving your body the rest and nourishment that it needs. Anything else that you are seeking will come soon after. But in this moment, let's find comfort in the fact that by embarking on this journey with me, you are getting calmer and more relaxed with each passing moment. With your eyes closed, take a deep, breath as you sink deeper and deeper into the mattress. Really turn your attention to the comfort of your mattress, the way it cradles your body and invites you to let go of any tension you've gathered throughout the day and any weight that you are carrying which may not be yours to shoulder. Notice the comfort of the pillow or mattress beneath your head, providing a safe place to lie and refresh. Imagine that you are still in your cozy bed, but your bed is no longer in your room. Instead, You find yourself on the edge of the ocean. Gaze around, taking in the beautiful sights that are all around you. It is not a warm summer day. It appears to be late autumn. You are in a cozy, rocky cove on the coast of a distant sea. The sand that your bed is set on is a half-moon shape, surrounded by rocky cliffs on either side. The rocky cliffs are doted with lofty pine trees that fill the brisk air with their citrusy, invigorating aroma. And that is not the only beautiful scent in the air. All around you, a low fog clings to the rocky cliff sides and hovers just over the dark water. The thick mist makes you feel as though you are in a storybook. And it adds a sense of comfort to the atmosphere. You feel like the world is just putting on this beautiful display for you. In the mist, 
You can smell the brilliant scents of the coast. You can smell the spirited wildflowers blooming in tiny nooks in the cliffs. Their delicate floral scent nearly overpowered by the aroma of the salty sea air. And that sea air is invigorating in itself. It causes you to breathe more deeply and more fully. And with each breath, you feel like you are being rejuvenated. The brisk aroma of the ocean fills your lungs as well. The briny smell of the cool ocean somehow reminding you of both warm days by the coast and eternal sleepiness of the rain, almost like the autumn day today. With every breath you take, you find yourself sinking deeper into the mattress, becoming more relaxed. And it is not only because of the fresh air in your lungs, but also because of the ocean waves slowly lapping the shore. You listen to their soothing sound as they rise up onto the sand, then disappear back into the sea, becoming one with the ocean yet again. There is a satisfying pop and fizzle as the waves reach their crescendo, stretching and reaching as far as they can onto the coastline. And a steady whoosh as they retreat back to the sea, relaxing into themselves again. Overhead, seagulls cool out into the fog, their mewing mixing in with the sound of the waves, creating a soundscape for this sleepy beach day. As you slowly breathe in, you notice the fog that's clinging to the coastline getting thicker. It goes from a nearly translucent haze to a thick, cool blanket of mist. As you breathe out, you watch as the fog dissipates into that gossamer disappearing into the sea. You breathe in deeply as the fog grows thicker around you. The thickness of the fog makes the breath you take even more nourishing and refreshing. You can taste the salt of the sea, the freshness of the air. As you hold that breath, you watch the fog shimmer in front of you. And as you breathe out, you watch the fog start to dissipate as it and you relax. You breathe in, watching the fog grow thicker and turning into a plush blanket. And you breathe out watching the fog dissipate into the pretty little gossamer. You breathe in, watching the fog grow thicker. And you breathe out, watching it disappear. Now that we have taken the time to unwind and find comfort in the place that we are in here and now, let us begin our sleep story on the coast of ancient Greece. The ancient Greeks had an undeniable bond with the ocean. They were tied to one another, so much so that a seemingly endless number of myths and stories are tied to seafaring, adventure, the beauty of the ocean, and the dangers that lurked beneath it. There are myths of heroes like Perseus, 
sailing across the sea on an odyssey. Myths of gods inexplicably connected to the ocean, and tales of sailors searching for promise on the other side of the horizon. But within all these myths and stories, there are tales about the creatures beneath the waves. Tales of sirens, of Kraken, of Calypso, and Circe, and many others. And today, we will follow a path to some of them. First, we will begin with the sirens. And that will take us to some rocky Greek islands on a foggy, cool night. When the Greek sailors set out onto the ocean, they were not sure how long it would be before they would return to the shore. They had wives back home, and if their journeys lasted much longer than expected, they often found themselves craving the beauty of the solid ground. The ocean around them seemed to stretch endlessly for miles, and after a while, they were itching for the thrill and comfort of the world on distant shores. They craved art, fun, and beauty. And often, they would find it in strange places. On days when they could hardly see a few feet ahead of their ship, through a curtain of thick, mesmerizing fog, they would pace aboard the ship, dreaming of the land. There was always a strange feeling in the air, and curiosity about what was lurking in the fog. Whenever they found themselves wondering about it, they would try to shrug it off. They would tell themselves it was just the waves, just more islands in the far, far distance. But the odd, unlucky ship would initially hear something in the distance. At first, it would almost sound like birds chirping, singing their song out across the ocean. The sailors would shrug, imagining that they had simply floated closer to an island than they imagined. But soon, the sounds of the birds chirping would change into something much more alluring. They would hear beautiful female voices singing. Their songs were truly music to the sailors' ears. The delightful, ethereal melodies seemed to dance through the fog, sweet as honey as they reached the tired sailors. They would feel their whole bodies relax as they were wrapped in the warm, comforting melody. A melody that made them feel completely and utterly at peace. But the melody was so hauntingly beautiful that they were drawn to it. There wasn't a sailor on the ship who didn't want to follow the sound, who didn't want to see the beautiful maiden that was weaving the music just for them. And so, the ship would journey towards the music. At first, it would be hard to quite pinpoint it, but soon, the music would grow louder and louder. The sailors would all gather at the front of the ship, their knees weak and their bodies melting like putty because they felt 
so utterly serene. The song seemed to wrap around them, offering them a safe place to lay their heads after so many long days out on the sea. They would find themselves seemingly in the midst of the music, so close to it that they could feel it in their bodies. They would look over the bow of the ship, trying to catch even a single glimpse of the women who were singing. But, just as they tried to look, the ship would be rattled. They were run aground, so desperate to see who was singing to them, that they sailed the boat directly into a craggy, unforgiving coast, as the sailors looked around in surprise, the song would grow louder. Because it wasn't maidens singing the song, but sirens. The sirens would attack the crew, keeping them from completing their journey. There are varying myths about what exactly the sirens looked like. Some ancient Greek writers depicted them as beautiful women, with long flowing hair, silky skin, and gentle eyes. Others described them as stunning women, with a human head and a bird-like body. Regardless, all sources agree that the sirens had a voice so beautiful it could lure even the most steadfast sailor into their trap. Although, there were some Greek heroes who were prepared to face the sirens. Following the Trojan War, the great hero Odysseus and his crew passed through choppy waters on their voyage home to Ithaca. They had heard tales that the sirens resided in the cold water in a pass they were forced to sail through. Odysseus was a hero known for his wisdom and wit, and as such, he was confident that the sirens were no match for him. In order to avoid falling prey to the sirens' calls, Odysseus made a plan. As the mist around them grew, encompassing the crew in the thick fog, Odysseus called upon his men. He ordered them to tie him to the mast at the center of the ship, where he would be left immobile unable to react to the siren's song. However, he knew his crew had to be taken care of as well. He ordered the crew to go to the candles that were burning all around the ship. There, they were to gather wax and mold it to fit in their ears so that they could block out the siren's singing. The crew did as they were told. Together, they pressed Odysseus up against the mast and tied thick ropes firmly around him. Odysseus wiggled a bit to ensure that he could not break free from the ropes, even if he tried with all his might. After he proved that the ropes were strong enough to hold him, his crew got to work picking wax from candles. By then, the fog had grown and splashed over the ship like a powerful wave. The white haze was so thick they could barely see the flickering candlelight beckoning to them. They dipped their fingers into the warm wax 
then rubbed their fingertips together until they created a roll of the white wax that was thick enough to block the song of the sirens. With everyone in place and the wax safely blocking any sound, they continued on into the fog. As they neared the sirens through the turbulent waves, the sirens began to sing their hauntingly beautiful song. It was a song so stunning, so breathtaking, that it could bring a tear to your eye with ease. But the crew remained steadfast staring straight ahead as they piloted the ship forward in silence. Odysseus heard the song, however, and it was, without a doubt, the most incredibly heart-stopping, breathtaking music that he had ever heard in his life. The music seemed to sink into his skin and dance with his mind and soul. He had never felt such an overpowering connection to anything before. It was as if it was the music of the universe. Music that everyone was meant to hear. He was desperate to get closer to it, to see the lips of the maidens it was coming from. But he was tied to the mast. It was a long wait before they were out of the fog. The boat seemed to move through the thick water, as if it was slinking through a sea of molasses. But, eventually, as time moved on, the siren song drifted further and further into the background. Soon, the crew was in the clear. They removed the wax from their ears and cheered, relieved to have escaped the clutches of the beautiful but deadly sirens. They untied Odysseus, who gazed back into the fog that was falling further and further behind them. For the rest of his life, he would carry the beauty of the siren's song. Now he understood the power of it, and why so many crews had perished in the waves where sirens resided. But, Odysseus was not the only Greek hero who was forced to face the sirens. Jason and the Argonauts passed through waters where the sirens lived on their way to retrieve the Golden Fleece as part of their quest. Much like Odysseus, Jason was a confident and wise leader but Jason had even more confidence than Odysseus did, and part of that confidence rested in the power and talent of his crew, the Argonauts. Orpheus, one of the crew members, was a man with superhuman musical abilities. His lyre playing was so beautiful that animals and even trees and rocks moved about him in dance. And Jason was confident that Orpheus could drown out the siren's music with his own. As they neared the fog encompassing the waters where the sirens resided, the crew was rigid and uncertain. Jason 
had full confidence in Orpheus. And, though the crew had been soothed by the heart-wrenchingly beautiful songs of Orpheus many times, they were unsure if the music could truly overpower the song of the sirens. But soon, they were sailing deeper into the fog. The curtain of fog washed over them, bringing with it a chill that surged through their bodies and prepared them for what was to come. Orpheus took a deep breath of the cool, brisk air, nourishing his body and soul before he began to play. The moment that music began to flow from his fingertips, Orpheus found himself smiling. The music was coming from him like it was an extension of himself. Every note, every chord, was dripping from his fingertips and cascading into the sea below like it was made of silver and gold. It was a truly heavenly song, unlike anything he had ever played before. The crew members gazed at him in wonder as he played. They couldn't peel their eyes away from the way his fingertips danced with ease across the strings, plucking that melody into the air. They were transfixed, utterly enraptured by the soul-stirring music that was being played. They were so captivated, in fact, that they could not even hear the music that was rising up from the choppy waters around them. The sirens hovered along the rocky shores, singing their hauntingly beautiful song up to the sailors, and yet not a single sailor budged. They remained still, staring at Orpheus, so wrapped up in his song that the sirens did not even exist to them. It wasn't long before the ship was out of the fog. Even after they escaped the fog, Orpheus continued to play as they sailed into the beautiful sunshine. And Though the siren songs carried on through the waters off the coast of Greece for decades, they were far from the only creature lurking beneath the waves of the Mediterranean Sea. On the shoreline, Queen Cassiopeia lived a lavish life with her daughter Andromeda. They lounged by the sparkling sea daily, wore the finest clothes in ancient Ethiopia, and dined on delicious food from the fresh farms around them. But there was a dark side to Queen Cassiopeia. She was a proud woman, a woman so infatuated with her own status and the perfection of her family that there was rarely a time when she wasn't talking about it. As her daughter Andromeda grew, she became an incredible beauty. People would stop in the streets simply to gawk at her. And, at times... They would gather around the royal estate, hoping to get just a glimpse of Andromeda as she lounged in her home or made her way through the many stunning corridors. Queen Cassiopeia was so proud of Andromeda's beauty that she began to speak a bit too highly of her. 
she boasted to everyone in the kingdom who would listen that Andromeda was more beautiful than the Nereids, the benevolent, compassionate, and stunning nymphs of the sea. The Nereids were highly offended when they heard of this. And when they told Poseidon, he knew something had to be done to punish Queen Cassiopeia for this indiscretion. On a dark, moonlit night, Andromeda went for a walk with her mother along the beach. Overhead, the full moon cast a silvery glow over everything, bathing the mother and daughter in such a gentle light that they could hardly think about anything other than what a marvelous night it was. But as they began to walk, the ocean beside them began to stir. The waters suddenly became choppy, and they seemed to grow darker and darker with every passing second. Andromeda stopped in her tracks and gazed out over the water, her eyes wavering with concern. The waves that were once lapping peacefully against the shore receded back into the ocean as if they were being peeled back by a powerful force. Shells and kelp and bits from long-forgotten shipwrecks were exposed on the ocean floor as the waves rolled back further and further towards the center of the sea. Andromeda and Queen Cassiopeia knew something strange was happening, but they couldn't put their fingers on what exactly it was. And then, As quickly as they had receded, the waves rushed towards the shoreline. Queen Cassiopeia grabbed her daughter by the hand and urged her to get further inland. But it was no use. The waves weren't just lapping the shoreline. They were heading straight at Andromeda. It was only once they got closer that the two women realized what they were looking at. It was Poseidon himself, mighty god of the sea, riding a foamy wave toward them. With no hesitation, Poseidon snapped at Cassiopeia, denouncing her for her vanity and hubris, and for needlessly insulting the Nereid. Queen Cassiopeia knew that Poseidon was not a forgiving god. She knew that her words that had greatly offended him would surely lead to her beloved daughter's demise. And indeed, that is how it seemed. To punish the queen for her arrogance, Poseidon flooded the entire coastal region of ancient Ethiopia and sent a terrifying sea monster, Cetus, to ravage the kingdom's inhabitants. In desperation, the king consulted the highest oracle of the land, who announced that no respite can be found until his daughter, Andromeda is offered in sacrifice to the monster, faithful to his foremost duty to save and protect his people. The king relented. Andromeda was thus left chained to a rock by the sea to await her death. Few knew what Cetus looked like, aside from the fact that it was a massive beast with large teeth, 
that could swim quickly. Many believed Cetus to be indestructible, a creature that no one could strike down. So, as the beautiful Andromeda stood tied to a rock at the very edge of the sea, just above the waves, she believed her fate was sealed. Andromeda knew that soon Cetus would come for her. Just at the edge of the water, the mist was thick. Andromeda breathed in the salty, refreshing sea air, trying to calm herself in her situation. She took big, deep breaths to center herself. She tried to think of a way out of this, of a way to defeat the monster. She wondered if she could call upon the Nereids and apologize for her mother's transgression, or if she could somehow wiggle her way out of her binds. But as the waves splashed against the rock, coating her in the froth of the ocean, it seemed less and less likely with every passing second, until in the distance, Andromeda saw something rather peculiar. In the waves far towards the horizon, she could see bubbles rising. Surely, bubbles from Cetus. But just beyond that, there was something making its way through the sky. But, Upon closer inspection, it was not something. It was someone. Perseus, a famed Greek hero, was returning home from a mission he had been sent on to kill Medusa, beloved by the gods. He had been given several gifts to aid him on his quest, including a pair of winged sandals that had been given to him by the god Hermes. He flew towards Andromeda, and as he did, a puzzled expression washed over his face. He was confused at the sight of Andromeda tied to the rocks, and the moment he laid eyes on Andromeda, he was overcome with emotion. A warmth surged through his whole body. A warmth that made his heart skip a beat and his soul stir in a way that it never had before. Andromeda's beauty stunned him. But not just her beauty the energy that was radiating from her. He had never seen a woman that had made him feel this way before. Just as this powerful feeling of love and admiration swept over him, he suddenly noticed Cetus underneath, who was flying through the water at lightning speed. Perseus had heard tales of Cetus, and he knew that no man had ever been a match for Cetus before. Determined to save the beautiful woman who he had fallen in love with at first sight, Perseus flew down to Andromeda. He promised her that he would save her, urging her to take deep breaths and remain calm. Andromeda continued to breathe deeply, she wanted to close her eyes. But the sight of Perseus flying through the sky toward her made her heart skip a beat. He was a handsome man, but more importantly, a gentle soul. 
that knew no fear or trepidation. Perseus hovered before Andromeda, putting a protective arm out in front of her. Cetus grew closer and closer, and as he did, Andromeda tensed more and more. She wondered what plan Perseus had in mind. And then, Cetus leapt from the waves. Just as Cetus rose from the waves, Perseus lifted up the head of Medusa. The beast laid eyes on Medusa's head and instantly turned to stone. Cetus sank to the bottom of the ocean before Perseus and Andromeda, leaving them safe and relieved. Perseus embraced Andromeda and took her back to her parents' home, where they were happily wed. And, fortunately for the people of ancient Greece and Ethiopia, Cetus was no more. I hope you have enjoyed this sleep story, and it has brought you a night of peaceful, restful sleep. The myths of ancient Greece were born from their connection to the ocean and their connection to adventure. Surely they were lying in bed, dreaming of crossing the sea, just as you may be now. Please, join me again tomorrow night for another sleep story. Until then, sweet dreams.